All right, so for today's workshop, we're going to be working with uh, King Solomon's Castle. And I'm gonna pull it up right now for you guys to view. Now, you can learn this from the Greater Key of Solomon book two. So it doesn't matter if you're, if you're somebody who's experienced or you're not experienced with this, like, it does have like a a process that is going to be a little bit more beneficial and more powerful if you were to use it. But let's be real, you guys. We can't always get goat blood and we don't all have swords laying around. Remember that this was written around the time of King Solomon's, uh, you know, era. So he would have had access to these types of things. King Solomon was also a king, so he was rich and uh, he didn't have to hard time gathering these types of things. King Solomon was one of the greatest alchemists of all time. He not only knew how to tame demons, but he also knew how to harness the truest powers of the universe through simple talismans that were highly calculated. He's written a ton of different books about alchemy, and um, I'm really happy to be sharing some of his information. I've shared it before as well. So you guys can definitely check out more as I'll be developing some of his practices. So in The Greatest Key of Solomon, book two, um, you basically, it starts talking out about like how the there's circles upon circles and there's this layout, right? And the person who's standing in the center of this diagram or this pentagram is the one that's going to feel like this profound, deep serenity, all right? So you have to allocate the, the circles and the diagram to the north, the east, the south, and the west. It's pretty much um, standard if, you, if you've been practicing the Celtic alchemy that I gave you, the Native American alchemy, or if you know anything about the medicine wheel in general, the circle is something that's pretty much in all sorts of shamanism and alchemy. So in order to be able to do this, King Solomon says that, you know, you need to have a sword. You need to be able to do this with, uh, uh, you know, a Kindle and the censers, incense. Uh, what else do you end up saying? You're supposed to draw the, the, the shapes of these diagrams in the ground with your sword, right? So obviously we don't need a sword, but you are going to want to at least do one of two things. Find north right now, wherever it is, you know, that you have it in your house. You might know that right off the bat, the top of your head. You might need to pull out your compass to be able to do this. So here is the diagram. So this is a very protective seal. Um, you can put this around your house, assuming that your house was right here in the center, right? This cross point. Or you could go ahead and at any given moment, sit with it on your own. So if you've been following other forms of onto high alchemy, we know that every circle in onto high alchemy means space, right? And then we know that the X or the cross point means like this present space right now, like where we are or this target right here. And other forms of alchemy like Druid, this is gift, you know, the, the gift of whatever it is that you're creating in that given moment. We also know that these stars right here are associated with the Merkaba, which is a 3D object that rotates around you. The square is associated with the next plateau of reality up. And it's basically opened up to like, you know, other, other figments of understanding other than your linear sense of understanding. The North represents wisdom. The East represents the future. The South represents the present and the West represents the past. Okay. Nothing ever matters other than this cross point right there, that, that center point. These other names around are usually of frequencies that are associated with certain angels or certain um, planetary bodies. You don't have to know these frequencies. You just need to know 
what you're summoning, right? And you need to trust that it's King Solomon's alchemy, pretty much. The way you set it up is you say, hey, I'm going to be using King Solomon's castle. Bam, pretty much saying that you're just using his alchemy. You're going to face to the north, okay? You're going to set that intention in the north. You're going to face the east, and then you're going to start creating the castle. So we are here in the center. You're going to see a circle define your environment. You're going to feel it. Take a deep breath. That is the base of the castle of your room. Even if you don't feel the energy in this present moment, just turn it on. Treat it like an app. Stop looking for it. Make it easy. Less control is more control. You're going to experience a higher sense of reality if you don't really try. You just got to turn on the energy and roll with it. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to see a second circle form itself. This is to expand the radius of your environment. According to King Solomon's diagram, from where you're standing, the first circle is three feet at either side from wherever it is you are in the center circle. Okay, so three has to do with creation. Double it, it has to do with our ancestors and movement. And then when you allow that to amplify itself in all directions, that would be three times three times three. You know, that would be three plus three plus three plus three. That would end up being 12. That's universal consciousness or the 12th chakra. The present moment within the rest of all of this is your soul. That would be nine. Automatically, we're starting to see how Nikola Tesla's 369 is applied to this. You could also turn on chakra mirror three, the ankh of the soul from onto high alchemy, and you can even use soul language or soul alchemy. Take a deep breath. Just understand that this castle is being formed in an alternate reality while it's being formed here. Your physical body is in the center point right here, but in an alternate reality, your soul is in the center point right here. We've repeated the same process on both layers. Now we are opening up a third circle around that circle. This represents your entire world, the conscious world externally and the internal world that we construct within our subconscious. You take a deep breath. You give into it. You don't fight the vibration. You'll start feeling that as you expand these circles, you're maybe feeling a little bit heavier or something's dragging down or like there's a density around you. You might see tints of green everywhere. You might feel like there's a platform underneath your feet or your feet are tingly. King Solomon's castle runs primarily off of Earth alchemy. How do you know that? Because, first of all, this X right here, we found it automatically through um, Druid alchemy, right? So then when you add a circle to that X, what is, what is this first circle line right here with the X in the middle represent? If you look up the Earth planetary symbol, you're going to see automatically, let me see if I can pull that up for you. Earth planet symbol. Perfect. So let's 
So I'm gonna go ahead and let's show you exactly what I mean right here. How I switch my screen. There we go. All right, so this symbol right here, okay, is literally right in the King Solomon's platform. The Earth symbol, the one that we use for cosmology and astrology, is the basis of the entire table. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Let me try that one more time, just in case if you guys couldn't see that. This symbol is being found right in the center of this symbol. Take a deep breath. So then this cube right here, it can represent in some ways the fourth dimension. It's easy to say that the cube is tied to the fourth dimension. Just let that sink in and let the square summon itself around that frequency. You're gonna feel like there's a, a wind or an expanse happening around you. You might have gotten a jolt where you're like, hmm, something just feels a little bit less tense. You're gonna understand that the ethers run inside of that square neuro codes letter the ethers this whole thing is an alchemy table so if you know quantum reiki grandmaster turn on the alchemy table Turn on light of the ethers. Turn on the tense chakra. Turn on the cosmic vibration of earth through cosmic alchemy. Turn on the vibrations of space through Antohai. If you know the ninth language of Antohai, the soul language, this is your present nexus point. So then we thank the East for the future for what we create. We thank the South for being present. And for its ability to be harvested and grown We thank the West 
for the illusion of the past. For the lessons of our ancestors. and for the wisdom that always comes and is. We thank the North for shining us with the opportunity of authentic wisdom evolution and transcendence. And then we let the next square form. Notice that only Ethers run within the first square. If you knew Atlantean or Druid or Egyptian alchemy, even Native American alchemy, there are many ceremonies that involve this style of work where you pray to the east, the south, the west, the north. You can even designate certain vibrations. So here we're going to first learn how to turn on this castle before we add in other ceremonies. Understand that since we are in the ethers in this square, Okay, and we're grounded on earth and we're bending space, our most immediate space within the ethers, that this is the greater consciousness of your reality. So here we are bending within the subconscious realm. Here we are creating within the conscious realm. For in the subconscious realm, there is no east, no north, no west, no south. It is only in the conscious realm where we experience this, which is 3D, deep breath. Give in to the alchemy. Just know that when you turn it on, because you understand what you're doing, it's going to run on autopilot. You do not micromanage any of the alchemy because you don't micromanage a computer app. Everything is spiritual technology. Now to the north, we call upon space. To the east, we call upon space. To the south, we call upon space, concentrated space. To the west, we call upon space. Let the meaning of creating space with your past sink in. Applying space to your wisdom. Altering space within your future. 
altering space within the present. Your mind is going to interpret this in a different way. Creating space with my past is understanding that it, it, it lives in a different reality. My past happen will always have to exist, but it is not what defines me or guides me to new earth. The space is another layer of reality. Always present, but conveniently far away. Space within your authentic wisdom, that it's ever expansive. The reformation of space within my future, that there is no space within my manifestation. Same notion with there is no space within my manifestation for the present moment. You might have interpreted that a different way. Even if you didn't contemplate it, your soul contemplated it. We're not just using baseline alchemy. Baseline alchemy means like, you know, like uh, Reiki, like Usui Reiki, 100%. Like that's baseline alchemy. That cannot do this level of control. King Solomon's castle on its own is powerful. Combining that with higher levels of alchemy like Antohai takes it to a whole new level. Space to our northeast, space to our southeast, space to our southwest, space to our northwest. The wisdom of my past, which creates space through the ethers. With my present forever turning into my past through space and the ethers, the present moment known as time. My future becoming my present through space again and time. For the present moment through the ethers. My future wisdom being bent by the ethers and space and time into the present moment. Deep breath. And in your mind's eye, See this diagram, see yourself in the center on this point. See this massive on the ground. Then see it take a 3D form, each one of these being a pillar or a tower. This being walls within another structure of walls within more walls with hallways that have to get to the main chamber, which is underneath the ground. The walls are tall. The castle is enormous. You are in the center 
you are protected for even if something were to traverse these walls they would still have to know of the greater ethers and the realms of man and earth to come to you. What does that mean? It means that if you have this on and you have somebody who's trying to curse you and they don't know what they're doing, first of all, they wouldn't be able to get past this wall. And if they did get past this wall and their consciousness wasn't great enough to understand that there's all this other extra high level magic on the inside, they would never get past this secondary barrier. That's to also say that there is an offense connected through each one of these sensors right here. You're gonna feel like a silence start to summon itself. Your sacral and your root chakras are gonna start expanding. So now let's go ahead and add some ancient Egyptian alchemy into this. To the east. Anrakto Amitev, to the south, Amset, to the west, Kevsenuv, to the north, Hapi, to the east, we open the gates of Ma'at, Cosmic order and harmony. The dawn. The energy of abundance and prosperity. And Antohai Adonai. The land of the holy Shambhala and that of beyond. to bring heaven on earth within the structures of this castle. And so it shall be. And so you pass. Deep breath, breathe out anything negative, give in to any tension in your body, allow this castle to penetrate your root, your sacral, your solar plexus, and your heart chakra. For those of you who have trained in the Antohai Alchemy, higher levels, allow this to exist at the eighth chakra. And even the ninth and the tenth and the eleventh.
choose to let go of your fears. You're in a castle that's completely protecting everything that you are. As long as you have this castle on, especially with the layers of alchemy that we have, you would have to be like a high level alchemist to literally get past this. You're literally 100% safe. You're protected not only by his castle, by all the proper alchemy that's inside. Allow this to bring light to your existence and light to your emotions and light to your mind. Let this light shine through the ethers to show you your authentic self, to bring clarity to your life. Let it bring clarity to the infinite you. Let this bring light to the light of all that is. Deep breath, let go of your mind. Stop looking for whatever's happening, stop hyper-focusing. Just exist. Let your inner child shine. Let your inner child sit in this castle. Choose to be and exist as your inner child. Take it on a deep breath. Really surrender into this.
let this castle exist inside of your root chakra, inside of your solar plexus chakra, inside of your sacral chakra. Another deep breath. Let go of your minds. Deep breath. Let this exist in every cell and truly give you the give yourself the blessing of being at peace
deep breaths. Take another deep breath. Take a couple of deep breaths, let it go. Let this castle imprint itself in your mind's eye. Our deep breaths. Deep breath. And be present in this room right now, right now. How are you guys feeling? Very calm and very clear. Yeah. 
Uh, very good. I'll try to convince this down real short, but immediately as we started doing this, I felt like I was transported back to a pyramid that we had been in, I think it was several weeks ago during one of the previous Zoom sessions. And this pyramid was within this castle, but the castle was outside this pyramid. And as you kept speaking, the mantras, the lessons, the chants from everything that I had learned over the last year kept filling the pyramid inside and out. And while all this is going on, I kept envisioning the boxes as forming a huge giant Merkaba. Yeah. Nice. Cool, you guys. Well, that is today's lesson when it comes to using some sacred alchemy. This still is part of the Neurocodes class. Um, it's like, like this extended version of it. As long as you are aware of the nature of alchemy, you'll be able to make like these connections that you guys could see were with like the earth cosmic symbol and like the center of the castle and stuff like that. So just always remember alchemy is your nature and you can make anything happen. I'm sending you lots of love and I'll be catching you in our next episode. Thank you.